Okay, um, so with this infographic, I thought we could have a look at where we live, uh, the UK, and our weather masses. This links into paper one and learning about sort of extreme weather events in the UK. Now, I know this this is the difficult bit, um, and I promise you I'm not drawing this from a map. I am doing this very much freehand uh, with nothing to prompt me. Um, but if you could just make the rough outline of the UK, so a kind of squiggly uh, shape um, for Scotland. God, that is actually terrible. I do apologise. But the, the purpose of this is not to have a beautiful drawing. The purpose is to have something that, roughly speaking, uh, looks a bit like the United Kingdom, just so that we can place things where they roughly should go. So I am just drawing the Isle of Wight and Wales. Let's not forget Wales. That wouldn't be good. Roughly speaking, there we go. So we should have um, Scotland. England, Wales, and ordinarily, obviously, we'd put Ireland and Northern Ireland, but uh, we're not too worried about that um, for this particular piece of work that we're doing. Okay, I've got a, a few different coloured pens, so I'm just going to change them about as I do this. Now, the UK is known. Uh, for having really diverse weather. We don't have the same weather all day, every day, all year round. Um, and we actually belong uh, to something called the weather roundabout. Okay, so I'm going to draw very roughly speaking, a bit like a roundabout that you'd see out on the road. Okay, um, and I'm also going to just quickly jot on here, sorry. My page is moving around a bit. Um, a compass, because that's important for this. Just a simple one with north, south, east, and west. Okay, now re remembering that this uh, is linked to uh, UK extreme weather. Okay, that's part of paper one. Um, and also, I'm just going to put in brackets, as we said about UK's extreme weather, and we talked about the weather roundabout. You likely would have done this probably with me in year nine. Okay, so um, from the north, we've got the polar air mass. This is a huge, hundreds and hundreds of miles across, massive air that is coming directly from the north. It's flowing down from the north towards our country. Okay, and I'm just gonna, these are supposed to be icicles. I'm not really sure they look like icicles. I'm gonna draw some snow in there. Um, but essentially, think cold, think dry. Okay, cold and dry uh, for the most part. I'm including snow there because when it reaches high ground, we tend to get snow up in the highlands, especially in Scotland. Okay, now that's from the north. From the south, we've got the subtropical air mass. I'm writing in orange, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's the subtropical air mass. But this one, comes from the Mediterranean. So I've put that there in brackets, Mediterranean. Okay, so I'm gonna draw some big sunshines. So remember this is our warm, dry weather, which comes up from the south. And I think it's sub-Saharan Africa weather. It's come over Europe, the dryness of Europe, the continent, and then direct to us. That's super, super hot. Okay, and then we've got from the west, this is the most common air mass that we have, the one that we see most of the time. This is our maritime air mass. We'll talk about why we get that 
most of the time in a minute, but it comes in, yes, from the west, but I guess more specifically from the southwest. Okay, and I'm drawing wavy lines because it comes from the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, from the southwest. And then there's just one more that we need to pop on here, which is from the east, is the continental, continental air mass. This one has come thousands of miles over um, the continent of Europe. Okay. Again, it can be quite a dry one. We forgot to mention, actually, sorry, I should put this on here. I'm going to draw some water droplets because the maritime air mass is a very wet air mass. It's the one that brings us lots and lots of rain. All that moisture that it picks up over the Atlantic Ocean makes it very wet. Whereas in contrast, the continental air mass can be very dry. Um, it can be dry and cold or um, dry and hot, depending on the season. Okay. There's one more thing, and it's quite an important thing, um, that we need to talk about, and that is the jet stream. Now I'm gonna draw it like a river going right across our UK. Now, it moves around, this isn't always set. It, it's a river of air up in the sky that really controls these air masses. So it, what, depending on where it is, it can push them back or hold them. And say if the jet stream is particularly high, we might get really lovely warm weather that, that sits with us for a while. If it's particularly low, we might get really cold weather um, or wet weather. So the jet stream can have a huge impact. Okay, so we'll just put that there. So it's like a river of air. Okay, so then we come to thinking a bit more now about sort of extreme weather in the UK. It's hard to imagine sometimes, especially where we live, um, you know, seeing extremely high temperatures that you might, might be more common in, you know, desert regions. But the UK has seen some really high temperatures. It's seen 35 degrees Celsius. If I can read that properly there. Um, let me just see if I've got a red pen. Let's try and go over that. Yeah, 35 degrees Celsius recorded. I'm going to just try and draw a thermometer if I can. It's obviously measured with, with mercury. Um, and this has caused in the past, I don't know if that's a very good fire emblem, but wildfires to actually happen and break out in London and around London. So we just need to write wildfires there. Not to the same scale as the likes of um you know, your uh, bushfires in Australia and things like that, but certainly, you know, bring out the, uh, the fire brigade for sure. Now that temperature, that high temperature was recorded over here in Kent. Okay. And all of this region, this sort of southeast region, can see some really high temperatures and very dry conditions due to its location. Rainfall tends to be primarily along this sort of west coast um, of the UK. Um, so there's our really hot extreme weather. Um, in Scotland, they have the opposite. So let me find my blue, there we go. They can experience up to sort of between 10 and 20 centimetres of snow, which doesn't sound, again, it doesn't sound like a huge amount, but that snowfall can accumulate massively. I'll just drop that on there. Um, things like school closures, um, quite common in winter months when there's quite a lot of school, um, people getting stranded in cars, that kind of thing. Not uncommon at all 
across Scotland, all of that area, right up there in the northeast, northwest, can experience quite extreme uh, wet and cold conditions. And Wales isn't uncommon either. When we had the beast from the east back in 2018, um, Wales had 51 centimetres of snow. Quite quite staggering in just 24 hours, which actually caused huge, huge problems in Wales. And uh, actually, we need to do that, don't we? We need to include the beast. Let's draw the beast from the east. So when I think of a beast, I think of something with horns, a bit like a devil, uh, it's kind of scary eyes sharp teeth <laughs> obviously it wasn't a real thing it was i'm i'm making fun but um it was nicknamed the beast from the east because it caused so many problems for so many people and obviously you can use it as one of your case stu case studies beast from the east and it came from the east it came over from continental europe and it hit the UK and caused a lot of these problems that we're talking about. One of the main ones, one of the main ones that's, that's true for lots of people who, who use roads and things, was that much of the of the roads and much of the transport links were actually cut off um, and couldn't be used. So you just draw a road and then put a big cross through it. Uh, schools we mentioned, didn't we? We talked about how those they can be shut, and actually it affected the NHS as well. Um, in down here in London, parts of the NHS for one of the first times in a long, long time um, were actually closed. So again, put a line through there. Okay. Right. All we need to add to this is the date. That the beast from the east came. So if we just pop that in, that was February 2018. Gives you your extra marks if you use the dates. And the only other thing I just want to add is, and we talked about it earlier with the jet stream, but when the jet stream is high, so when it's moving up and over our country, it gives us that lovely warm weather coming up from the from the tropics in the Mediterranean. So we'll just draw some sunshines on there and get us thinking about that warm weather that it brings. Um, and on the flip side, when it is low, and it's down over our country, it's inviting a lot of that cold or that wet weather to come in. So we'll just use a different pen and perhaps include some snow or rain wet weather. So there you have it, the UK's, very poorly drawn, I do apologise, but the UK's weather roundabout with our four main air masses, our jet stream, and just a few incidences of extreme weather in the UK.